you've put in all the hard work. You got your AWS certifications. You got your resume all professionally written. You submitted for the AWS job. You got your LinkedIn profile looking top notch. And guess what? AWS recruiting coordinator reached out to you and they want to schedule you for the AWS Solutions Architect interview. And now the only thing that stands between you and getting your amazing job at AWS as a Solution Architect is nailing the AWS Solution Architect interview. In this video, I'm gonna give you a rare look behind the curtain for the AWS Solution Architect interview so you can make sure that you're well prepared on interview day. If you're new here, I'm Greg, creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud YouTube channel. On this channel, I'm sharing with you AWS Cloud and Tech Insights to empower you to be able to change your life and to build that tech career you've been dreaming of so you can live the life you want to live. Make sure if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm releasing new videos every week and you don't want to miss any of them. Now you may be asking yourself, what qualifies me to tell you about the AWS Solution Architect interview process? Well, the cool thing is I am actually a senior AWS Solutions Architect at AWS. I've been working at AWS for over seven and a half years as a solution architect, and I have interviewed many solution architect candidates. I have a wealth of experience, and I wanna share that with you right now. So you can look at this interview as three different phases you have to get through. The first phase is we have to have an AWS recruiting coordinator reach out to you. This is largely having a resume that's buttoned up and looking real nice, okay? I suggest getting your resume professionally written. Also, I suggest you network with people in the industry on LinkedIn so you can kind of get your name out there. And if you are fortunate enough to know somebody that works at AWS, see if you can get a referral as another way in. So fast forward to you've done all that right. Now an AWS recruiting coordinator reaches out to you. They're just gonna check some things to see if you're interested in the job, a little bit about your background. It's not gonna be a deep dive because this is just the recruiting coordinator, essentially the recruiter for that position. Once everything looks good there, now we're getting into the meat of the process and the next stage is gonna be the phone interview. The phone interview is typically 60 minutes and this is gonna be a technical screen. This is typically aligned with a AWS Solution Architect that works at AWS. The format of the technical screen is going to be a video conference. So make sure that you are in a room that is free of noise, that's good lighting, make sure your webcam is working and operational and that you're not looking all blurry. When you get on the line with that AWS Solution Architect, build some sort of rapport, do an icebreaker, you want to humanize yourself. You don't want to appear, you know, real nervous and, and, and sweating and all that type of stuff. Just kind of, I, I know it's an interview. I know you're going to be stressed out, but just kind of like, don't take yourself too serious and be wound too tight on that thing because you're just dealing with another human on the end of the line. And in some cases, that person interviewing you, they could become a future colleague. So after that initial icebreaker and you've built a rapport, your interviewer will probably introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about how long they've been at AWS, their background and that type of thing. Then they'll kick off and ask you a little bit about yourself. So you can kind of cover at a high level what you've been up to, uh, what you've been focused on. And after we've gotten through those preliminary items, now it's time to get down to the questions. Now this first phone interview is a technical screen. So that AWS Solution Architect is going to check your domain depth and breadth. So we're gonna to to go through various areas such as application development, database, networking, storage, AWS Cloud Architecting Best Practices, and ask you a series of questions. Let's say, for example, I was gonna ask you a Cloud Architect Best Practices question, and I may ask you, how would you scale a three-tier architecture in AWS Cloud? Now that's a big open-ended question, and this is your time to shine. You don't wanna say things just like, oh, I'm gonna use EC2, and then I'm gonna use S3, and then I'm gonna do CloudFront. Yes, those might be the raw ingredients that you throw into the architecture, but you really wanna demonstrate your knowledge as a solution architect and your ability to work backwards from a customer's needs and deliver a business outcome. So you might wanna push back on that question and say, can you give me a little bit more information? 
Can you tell me a little bit more about the business use case? Because guess what? As a solution architect, these are the behaviors that you're going to be demonstrating every day on the role. So that's something that will set you apart just from going straight into the question and just rattling off answers without the proper context. Now, as you're answering those technical questions, your AWS solution architect that's interviewing you is going to be taking a bunch of notes and they're going to be preparing follow-up questions. Those follow-up questions drill a notch deeper every time that they ask you a question just to see what your depth of knowledge is within that domain. Go as deep as you're comfortable with going, but do not just make up answers out of thin air because one of the leadership principles that we'll talk about here, the concept of leadership principles here in a second, is that you need to be able to earn trust. So it's not just keep answering even if it means making up stuff. Don't be afraid to tell your interviewer that, hey, you know what? This is my depth of knowledge of this. This is about where my understanding of this topic stops. But I'm going to take a note here to read up more on this because I'm curious to be able to go to a deeper level. And that's going to get you a lot further than just trying to keep going and going and going and making up stuff. Because guess what? It's going to be next to impossible to trick your interviewer into thinking you know what you're talking about when you don't. Now these technical questions will go on for 60 minutes. So let's say your interviewer takes you to the database domain. They may ask a question like, how would you make a database on AWS more highly available? Very straightforward question, but your opportunity to shine. You could answer this a number of ways. A great way to answer it would be to leverage a managed AWS service like Amazon Relational Database Service where you could talk about how a customer could lean on AWS to make that database highly available and fault tolerant and do a click button multi availability zone across multiple AZs right in the AWS environment. And then your interviewer will spend a lot of time in that domain going to the nth degree asking you about databases. And again, once you've hit your limit of depth of knowledge, just tell your interviewer, this is my understanding of this topic and this is about as deep as I can go. And then your interviewer will bounce to another domain. We could start going into networking. They may ask you a question like, tell me what are the best practices for setting up a VPC a virtual private cloud in AWS? And then you'll go through your answers, leveraging AWS best practices. I highly suggest that before your technical phone screen, you review the AWS well-architected framework, which will cover how to build secure, cost optimized, operationally excellent, reliable, performant, efficient, and sustainable architectures in AWS because every time you answer a question, if you can do so within the context of leveraging those AWS World Architect best practices, it's gonna look very good for you on that interview. Now you've made it almost all the way through that interview till about the 55 minute mark. This is where your AWS Solution Architect that's interviewing you is going to ask, do you have any questions? Make sure you ask some questions and don't just think of those on the fly. Go ahead and have those scribbled out on a notepad because guess what? You have an AWS Solution Architect that's been working at AWS for some length of time. This is a great opportunity for you to ask questions, to learn more about the role, and also to demonstrate to your interviewer that you are in curious, you're leaning in, and that you're very interested in this position. After that technical phone screen, if you've done well, after a few days, you'll hear back from that recruiting coordinator that initially reached out to you on the position and they will want to schedule you for an Amazon Loop interview. Now that technical phone screen that you just passed was one hour, but the Amazon Loop interview is literally an all day interview where you'll be meeting with five to six Amazonians. You'll be meeting with one Amazonian at a time for an hour. Now this could be a mix of different roles. Could be a solution architect, could be a technical account manager, could be an account executive, could be the hiring manager. So you're really getting a diverse set of multifunctional cross-organizational people that are interviewing you. Now the Amazon Loop interview is less about getting deep into the technical weeds and it's really about not only determining is there a functional fit for you as a solution architect, but if there's also a cultural alignment with the Amazon leadership principles. Now, if you've never heard of the Amazon Leadership Principles, you absolutely have to study these. I'll put a link in the description below. The Amazon Leadership Principles covers things like customer obsession, bias for action, 
diving deep, ownership, just to name a few. All the questions that your interview asks you are derived from a subset of these Amazon leadership principles. And you're gonna to have to answer in what's called the STAR format, S-T-A-R. You're gonna to have to provide the situation, the task, the actions you took, and the results that you observed. And your interviewer wants to know what you did and what you contributed. So when you're answering those STAR-based questions, you don't wanna say, we did this, or my team did this. You wanna show ownership and the fact that you led that particular solution for all of your examples. Now, speaking of your examples, you want to have at least between four to six good to go scenarios that when your interviewer asks you questions, you can put that response in the context of a star format and then align it with the question they're asking you. And here's a pro tip. Remember, you're gonna have about five to six people interviewing you that day. So you want to use different examples because you don't wanna use the same example at one of your previous jobs over and over and over again. Definitely not for a single person and also not recycling the same example five or six times over through every interviewer. Because once that Amazon Loop interview is over, that group of interviewers is going to come together in a meeting and do what's called a debrief to discuss all the feedback and your responses in that Amazon Loop interview. By using different examples with different interviewers, now they have a really good 360 degree view of all the things you've worked on. I highly suggest doing some mock interview preparation come up with some star-based questions and have one of your friends pretend to be the interviewer and ask you that question and practice recalling some of your scenarios and then aligning those with your response for that mock interview. Here's a couple of pro tips for that Amazon Loop interview. At the start of each interview, when you're interviewing with that Amazonian, again, do some icebreaker type stuff, build a rapport. If you need to get some water or if you need to go take a quick restroom break, don't be afraid to tell your interviewer, hey, I need a quick break or let me go get a, a drink of water. Have you a notepad and a pen ready? Because it's good when your interviewer is asking you those questions, feel free to write some notes and just give them a heads up. Hey, do you mind if I write this question down? I wanna make sure that I really understand it. Also, once the question has been asked, don't be afraid to ask your interviewer, hey, if you didn't understand that question, can you repeat the question again? And then, don't also be afraid to insert a pause between when the question is asked and then insert a pause so that you can gather your thoughts before you respond. At the end of every individual Amazon Loop interview, make sure when your interviewer asks, do you have any questions? Come up with at least two, three questions to ask as time permits. Congratulations, you made it through the technical phone screen and you made it through the Amazon Loop interview. After that's all over, within about a week or so, your recruiting coordinator should reach back out to you to provide feedback. Fingers crossed, it's good news, and AWS extends an offer to you. We've reached the end of the video. I hope you found it very insightful, and I hope it helps you on your AWS Solutions Architect interview. You can go ahead and ask any additional questions you have below in the comments, and as always, I do look at your feedback. If you have suggestions for new videos that you'd like to see me make and do a little bit deeper dive in a particular area, put those in the comments below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps the channel grow. And before you go, make sure you check out this video right here.